Turning it up. Hello, 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 everybody, one and all. Welcome to yet another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. My name is Charles, and with me today, as always, is my lifelong friend and co-host, Dylan. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend, Charles. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend as well, Dylan. And not just any fantasy, mind you. That's right. Because today we are talking about fantasy that we are going to improvise and create right here on the spot, live, on air, through the return of our series, Friends Creating Fantasy. Not live in the least bit, Charles, but... (laughs) We we will not recorded live. (laughs) Yeah, recorded, and we have no prior knowledge and all that kind of fun stuff. Anything can happen in one of these zany friends creating fantasy episodes where we pretty much randomly generate a couple nouns to make a title for a hypothetical fantasy novel, Mm -hmm. and then some character archetypes and some uh, yeah character trope types for those character archetypes i guess it's like character roles and character trope types and then we see if charles and i can come up with an outline basically like a verbal outline (laughs) of a story off the fly based on that and we've done this once before when we created the raven's fantasy That's right. The Raven's Fantasy, um, book one of the Unkindness Trilogy, was a series that we created um, like a month or so back when we first attempted this idea. And that was kind of nerve wracking because I was kind of nervous when we started that episode. I was like, this could go absolutely horribly. (laughs) Like this could just come up and generate some things that we have no idea how to stitch together. We haven't put our like improvisational skills to the test on the show before that either so it was um a daunting task but we came up with something uh that was uh surprisingly coherent i would say well the quote on our made-up book cover that we posted on instagram from you charles yes (laughs) host of the fdf co-host of Mm -hmm. the FDF podcast said more coherent than I was expecting, which is actually, (laughs) I think the best way to describe that one to go outright coherent is probably a bit strong, but more coherent (laughs) than was expected. I I think that's fair. Yeah. The fact we actually able to put some sort of story together was a miracle. And we're hoping to replicate that. I guess you would call it success. (laughs) <laughs> today and i don't think we can put it off for much longer what we're gonna do first is we're gonna generate a title so we're gonna have two random nouns that are common in fantasy titles and then we'll take those two nouns and try and mash them together to create a a a book title so last time we drew raven and fantasy and then that's when we decided to call it the raven's fantasy so. <laughs> yeah so these nouns are basically taken from a bunch of common fantasy title nouns that might come up in other series and just things that came to Charles's eye his head it's not it's not just grabbing from the dictionary but it is randomly picked so with no further ado Charles I'll generate one noun and you generate one noun all right so I am generating a noun and I have it ready all right and I have one ready too Charles what's yours Mine is the word darkness. Mine is power. Oh, so okay. do we have I to call this options. the power of darkness? Like that's what I was. Th- that's the first thing that came to mind for me too. So and that's the front runner, the power yeah. of darkness. I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah, there's. I mean, you could flip them, right? the oh the darkness of power <laughs> that's kind of i don't know charles that might be like a grim dark tale about how power corrupts is the flip side of things right the, the darkness, darkness of, power. of power that's kind of interesting um 
I like that as well because yeah, it, it implies that you know there there is this grim dark side to being powerful, right? Power corrupts, you know, it's the darkness of it. Or maybe it doesn't corrupt, maybe it's something else. But what is that darkness that comes with having power? I think is uh I that's a strong contender. Yeah. Should we um, just call it? <laughs> yeah. I I'm all for that one. That's I think exciting. it's more interesting than the power of darkness is the darkness of power. So I also think I it's think more exciting than the Raven's fantasy, if I'm going to be honest with <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I do. I do think it's giving us a little bit more to work with than the Raven's fantasy. So, so <laughs> far, so good, Charles. We are on I, a roll here. Let's keep that going. So, no good story is complete without a protagonist. So, what we're going to do is Dylan has the character role. And then I have like the character trope or archetype. So let's get the role first, Dylan. Tell us about our protagonist. Who are they? Our protagonist is a gunslinger, Charles. Oh, a gunslinger. We're going a little more forward in time with this fantasy thing here with gunslinger. All right. And then what kind of... Flintlock fantasy is what we're looking at here, Charles. This is maybe some Powder Mage trilogy style stuff we got going on a la... Brian McClellan. Yeah, and I just picked a very interesting um, trope or archetype, hardened. We have a hardened Ooh. gunslinger in starring in the darkness dark of power. All right. You know, we have this, this story is coming together. It's practically written itself already. Like, do we need yeah. to say more? Should we just call it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we did it. We did it, guys. <laughs> nice job, everyone. We did it. Um, should we just go ahead and get ourselves an antagonist as well? Yeah. Or do we want to extrapolate a little bit? I think we need the protagonist. I'm ready for an antagonist. And yeah, antagonist. Can... Yes, yes. Yeah. Let's get that so, antagonist going. The antagonist is a knight. Oh, and my oh. word is exiled. Oh, oh Charles. Oh, an exiled knight. Dude, I feel like this... It lends itself so much better to telling a story than what we got from Raven's Fantasy. Okay. But, you know, pressure creates diamonds, Dylan. Right. Like, now that we have everything kind of handed to us here, can we pull it off? That's the question. Um, I kind of like that both gunslingers and knights exist yeah. at the same time in this. But maybe a knight is not like, you know, shining armor, like jousting on a horse. Maybe it's a knight that's like a gunslinging knight that was exiled you know like does it have to be sword and shield or can it be more to the times what's more interesting i kind of so i already had in my head that this was going to be one of our biggest inspirations for the darkness of power charles was brian mcclellan's work Mm -hmm. so when we're being interviewed later on it's like uh, (laughs) who did you draw from we'll be like well obviously brian mcclellan was a big interest uh influence and i think something that i like about mcclellan's work is that he has sort of that hard magic system crew going up against a soft magic system crew and maybe one of our inspirations here is that like times are changing and we do have some like guns and things like that coming up uh, on one side but then there is an old way of folks who are still wielding some of these like swords and shields and some and maybe they have some sort of like magic powers that can help even the odds a little bit to make this a fair fight with the mm-hmm. gunslinger folks i see but yeah I, it's maybe also this called knight. yeah that's I, okay so let's that that's a decision that let's lock it in it's a traditional knight that was exiled, not yes. a, like a modern thing that they call knights. And I, I like that. So we've got the hardened gunslinger as our protagonist. You know, I imagine that they're kind of rugged looking. They've got a bit of a gravelly yeah. voice, you may, maybe some scars or something. Um, and they're proficient with shooting guns and whatever. And they One would hope. And they know the <laughs> land and everything like that. Yes. And there are protagonists in a series called The Darkness of Power where he's got to go up against an exiled knight. That's the conflict that we now have to create. Yeah. So when we step back and we think about themes, mm-hmm. whatever we're building toward has to in some way 
tell us something about how power corrupts or like has a dark side to it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Charles, remind me it's, so it's a protagonist is the gunslinger. So the knight is actually the antagonist. Yeah. Yeah, So I feel like the person who's going to have to learn these kind of lessons is probably our already hardened gunslinger. Um, And maybe like off the bat, I just find it interesting if there's something to work toward where like the knight is exiled for the kind of reasons that they were corrupted by power already. And mm-hmm. maybe like the gunslinger, we start building toward how they also learned that lesson despite having been so hardened by life already. I like that. And I think what we need to do is flesh out a little bit more what is that theme like we know that there's darkness to power but let's be more specific because you can go a couple directions right there's there's that corruption aspect of it but and that's maybe the more obvious path but then there's also a darkness to power in that people are always trying to take it from you or maybe people always want something from you or maybe you can never live like a um ignorance is bliss kind of life like maybe there's so much responsibility you have to shoulder right there's what's i like about this title is there's so many different ways and maybe it's all of them um or a couple of them if we're trying to go for capital l literature here um (laughs) what kind of what kind of themes are we looking to explore here is this like power corrupts or is it um power attracts other kinds of power like what are we what are we leaning towards here and what makes the best conflict between a hardened knight and an exile I mean, an exiled knight and a hardened gunslinger you're asking the right questions charles maybe we'll figure that out along the way like i feel like mm. maybe if we because there's so many options for the ways in which there's a darkness to power i think if we put the hardened gunslinger in an in a place where they get some sort of power, we might find out for ourselves by, you mm-hmm. know, take this by the seat of our pants. That's true. What and I think there's an interesting the opportunity learn? here. I agree with you. So let's just try and flesh this out because this idea of being hardened and also of being exiled implies that stuff has already gone down. Yes. <laughs> and you can't be exiled without having done something worthy of being exiled and you can't be hardened without having lots of experience doing something so it might be useful to have some backstory for these characters that brings them together you know what what if they rose to power together and then there was some sort of schism that took Mm. place that led to the knight being exiled and the gunslinger remaining in charge there's always this trope of like nature versus science where but more often than not it's industry that's the antagonist in nature that's the protagonist maybe we can flip that on its head here where because now the knight old school you know not industrial could be this, this antagonist role right so that could be something interesting like if we're doing old school and new school like new school is industry and technology and and guns and our protagonists knows that like you need these kinds of tools to gain power and you know that's how i've been alive for this long that's how i've survived and you gotta be you know realistic (laughs) (laughs) yeah let's not get sued by joe abercrombie but uh so you know but you have to be uh pragmatic about yeah. these things when it that comes would be to very it's like fantasy. you just brought a sword to a gunfight you know <laughs> <laughs> that line definitely comes up <laughs> well done, right. Charles. so you know that well, kind of thing um here's what i'm thinking so i, I don't really want to tell a story where the bad guys are on the side of nature and the pro tags are on the side of this industry like, or... industry and pollution like i don't think yeah well, it wouldn't be, have, be the you know, good guys but you spin it so that it's actually good and actually well, bad yeah here's the thing i think maybe so it's a knight right it's someone who cares about like the codes of honor and fealty mm-hmm. and duty and all these kind of things and maybe the 
like that old side represents those kind of old school values for which the world no longer, at least in the hardened gunslinger's eyes, and he's seen a lot, or mm-hmm. she. We do have to figure that out, but yeah, uh, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, we're still, un- we're still or open. They, I mean, yeah, there's all we got to figure all that kind of stuff, yeah. but the hard, the hard gunslinger. They have seen it all, and they know the reason they picked up a gun in the first place was because the times were changing, and they're done with all that fealty, code of honor nonsense that the exiled knight was willing to uh, fall on their sword for, if you will. Yeah, that I think that's a great way to go, because there's always this idea of, like, you know, sometimes to advance in you know, society, when it comes to either social values or scientific values, it's like sometimes the older generation just has to kind of like pass out and the newer generation has to come in with those new ideas to progress society, right? So it could be one of those things of like, maybe there's some sort of driving force and the old way, the knightly way just is not capable of handling it. And it's this newer way that needs to take over. Um, and so maybe if there was some kind of driving force on the outside, putting pressure on this environment, on this setting, and it's like, hey, this gunslinging method is working pretty well. And like this older school, like onerous, um, chivalrous way of structuring society is going to get a lot of people killed and potentially like cause us to like lose our society you know so this this need to overthrow maybe the honorable knight and that's like the darkness of power it's like you need to have this kind of power to do the right thing and i know that this is what's going to keep the most people alive but it and there's some darkness to it in that we need to you know handle this exiled knight character who's so persistent in the old ways kind of a thing could be interesting mm. Yeah, so let's put that in our back pocket as mm-hmm. something that I think, I think that makes a lot of sense, right? We need some sort of outside force. I just nothing comes to mind immediately. Some sort of outside force that is so powerful and great and threatening that uh, our hardened gunslinger knows that it's time to move past all of this old school stuff. If if the even humanity maybe is going to survive, like some sort of existential threat. So we, we've got that idea, and maybe we can figure out later, unless something comes to mind for you, what that might be, that mm-hmm. existential threat. Mm-hmm. It could be interesting. Like, I'm wondering, is it supernatural? Like, is it creatures or zombies or something like that? Or is it just, like, another militaristic force? Um, what's more interesting there Ooh, um Charles. i kind of like getting supernatural supernatural i was thinking too and what if i kind of want to play off the title here what if like the force is called the darkness i'm listening what right? kind of force like, are we talking about here i don't know but i'm just <laughs> thinking kind of like mistborn you know uh there's uh, uh the deepness i think is what i hope i'm getting that right Please, uh, um, that the, sounds. I don't want to spoil anything too by like trying to clarify. Yeah. Um, but there's some sort of yeah, it is the deepness. Um, I'm googling it. Uh, yeah, so the deepness is kind of this, and I don't think it's a spoiler to talk about the the deepness because that's presented early on in Mistborn and is not. You know, that's a question, not an answer. Is mm-hmm. the deepness so? The deepness is kind of the equivalent of what the darkness is for us, Charles. It's this supernatural threat or force that somehow we need guns to defeat. I like that quite a bit. And here's how I also kind of see it. So there's this outside force, right? There's this, let's say there's this political faction that's in charge. I kind of like the idea of the gunslinger either being like a soldier or a bounty hunter or something like that. That's like brought in by the powers at B to either exile this knight or track down this exiled knight or whatever and hunt them down and so the gunslinger out of like you know a contract is doing this and then he gets thrown more and more into these political situations and and 
struggling more with these power situations. And then this outside supernatural force thrown in kind of shakes all that up of like, all I can go on is my hardened experience and this works and what you're doing is not working and is actually going to put us all in danger. Like, I think we're kind of going towards it. I like that last element a lot. It's like, what you're doing is what's going to put us all in danger. I think that is a good dynamic for our hardened gunslinger to have with our exiled knight. But Charles, I always love when the pro tag and the antag have some sort of history or relationship. Like, I like when things get personal. So what do you think of maybe the exiled knight and the hardened gunslinger like were lifelong friends like you and I, Charles, Whoa. where they like grew up together and maybe even they were both knights and something about what made the gunslinger hardened is what made them like no longer become a knight and not uh, go down on the hill. Some of kind all of these schism or values. something. <laughs> yeah, schism. I, I think I used that earlier. <laughs> um, so yeah, but they, they had, yeah, I mean, I mentioned the schism around this larger, like the new school and old school out of schism. But what if that is personified by the way that our exiled knight as the Antag and our hardened gunslinger had a schism themselves uh, after their long time friendship or and like rise to power together? So I'm like, open what? to that. And I yeah. also like, you know, what I like in my relationship between protagonist and antagonist is when they both think they're doing the right thing. Yes. So in that sense, that's why I like having that existential, like that outside yes. threat that's coming in. And then what makes this um, conflict is their different values or the fact that they're so be- believing in what they think is right that it puts them at conflict with the other person. Um, so I think to make the threat something that monumental that it would break up a friendship, uh, is an, makes for an interesting read. I think we're trailing down the right path here. Yeah. Okay. So we can, yeah, we can flesh this out. I think now, so if we're in agreement about exiled knight and hardened gunslinger rise, together and they're friends and have this relationship um let's say you know they went to some sort of knight academy or what have you right they're trained or they together, fought in a war together fought or they've you all know, of the above whatever yeah they've been through it all charles <laughs> i mean we've got a hardened gunslinger they've seen a lot mm. so then they rise up the ranks together, something like that. And this is a time before a schism has taken place between them or between the like old ways and the new ways. Mm-hmm. And I think like there's got to be some way where like the gunslinger was involved in how the knight got exiled. Like we, how, how did this schism happen and how did the knight get exiled? There's all backstory. So, right. I the think way. the schism has to happen by some really dire extreme outside threat like maybe you know we're at the verge of some sort of catastrophe whether it be a supernatural force or something that we had never experienced before right all of a sudden like we were this peaceful european society like doing our whatever fantasy stuff and then like everything changed when the darkness attacked (laughs) 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 you know and all of a sudden, they're thrown into the situation that no one is prepared for that's also extremely urgent and, and dire. Um, so all of a sudden now, they have to make decisions and quick, and of course, power gets in the way, and you know how politics works. Nothing can be decided quickly. There's too many complicated pieces moving, and that can be a part of this darkness of power. It's like we need to react fast in the best interest of everyone, but we're so busy arguing that we're doing ourselves a disservice. Like, when can we put aside our differences to react to this, like, global threat that we can come yeah. together? But they're not coming together because of In whatever reason. In fact, they reasons. split apart. In fact, they split apart. Yes. Yes. That's right. So this darkness, this supernatural threat, in some way, there's something that makes the night think that the old ways is the best way to defeat 
this supernatural threat while the protag or hardened gunslinger thinks that a new way in fact putting down the sword and picking up a gun is what's going to best fight the threat what kind of threat do you think right originally be... i was i'm trying to think of something like what can be so like, we need something that can be dealt with with guns <laughs> so yeah that's kind of what's um stopping me because i thought like well what if all of a sudden it just got like bizarrely dark and never got light again and like random crap was falling from the sky or something that would it like creatures like ash yeah or ash but i was thinking more like <laughs> creatures maybe or like i'm just saying we're very misborn inspired at this point <laughs> yeah but um i'm thinking more like supernatural and that there's like yes. these creatures that they've never seen Ooh. before you know like um that are all of a sudden appearing after this darkness happened you know so like all of a sudden it they are clearly under attack by something mm. where it's now pitch black and they're getting attacked oh. by these scary, creepy things that they've never seen or dealt with before. Like, imagine if tomorrow the sky was dark and there's these creepy creatures crawling around. How could you even react? And then imagine the powers that be in our own society trying to figure out how to handle it. You know, it would be like crazy and there would be a schism. I mean, in, yeah, to not get political, but that kind of stuff happens today in politics of like crazy stuff happens and we're so busy fighting and trying to take the other party down that we're not addressing the conflict you know so there's some political connotations you could underline here <laughs> but i think making the situation that confusing and supernatural and maybe even scary I, i'm happy to I'm, I'm interested in going a little scary on this one you know creepy yeah i mean maybe we discussed in our Mark Lawrence answers our questions uh, episode that Mark Lawrence wants more zombie films anyway, not necessarily zombie fantasy novels, but maybe there's some, I don't want to go old school zombies, but I do wonder if there's something to that whole darkness bit where maybe they just only come out at night. Like, whatever these creatures are, every night they come out during mm -hmm. the darkness. And that gives us the days in as kind of these lulls for people to have these disagreements and arguments and uh, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I and do then the like nights there is being when... lulls, but I, I wonder if we can come up with some other terms in this, like, for lack of a better word, magic system thing that doesn't revolve it being day. Cause I was like, what if it was just dark all the time, all of a sudden and the light never I mean, came it out set again. The setting, yeah. It set the setting. Well, for sure to, yeah. So, okay. I'm fine with the darkness being that it's dark all the time. It's going to be hard for the movie. Right. Uh, you could come with the first Charles, line, but... like, uh, you know, everything changed when the sun went out or something, <laughs> you know, like something like that, where it's just like, um, or maybe it's not that it's, it's like, actually dark, but maybe it's like a purpley kind of hue or something. I don't know. Sure, like, sure. Something yeah. happened. And then these characters are kind of out of their depth in terms of trying to figure out what's even happening. You know, they don't even know what's going on. Yeah. But then something, I mean, we want those lulls, but something started happening when things went dark. And... <laughs> that i think maybe yeah just like i mean maybe we can for the sake sort of, of the movie rights monsters. we can have day and night i'm you know i don't want to you know get too far away from our darkness of power gunslinger night scenario with all the supernatural stuff but we just need a we need the threat to be there charles but we need enough downtime to actually play out all of this like political intrigue and splitting of factions and fighting between our actual protag and our antag whereas the darkness can't be everything it can't take the whole thing over so right and it also has to be something that very immediately and abruptly shakes things up and across like the whole society you know yeah. like it's got to be like breaking news kind of stuff like oh society as we know it just changed <laughs> like, well i'll propose charles that just for the sake of expediency mm -hmm. that we do get the elements we're looking for 
let's come up with this like they do come out at night there's some sort of monster or monsters or something and that's our threat and we'll keep a day night cycle i'm open to changing that mm -hmm. if you come up with something else but i just don't want us to get caught up talking okay. about like day night cycle settings. um something happened one night something crazy she, like change society forever and then now all of a sudden there's all these creatures that are coming out whatever and right. they're trying to trying to deal with it the best they can but of course there's these political parties that are causing things to not go smoothly at all they're getting in their own way and that's when one of the parties i guess is this night exiled at the beginning of the book or does this night get exiled during the book you know i think i think the book takes place like right when the schism has already happened and the night is already exiled like all that other stuff we were talking about was backstory with like the, them growing up together and whatever their rise to power doesn't matter i mean we could the pull a mark lawrence and start it Ooh. with the gunslinger facing off with the night and everything is dark and crazy and then go back <laughs> like there might be there might be something to that but i think if we're doing that we're just kind of as as mark lawrence does like fleshing out the characters and their relationships via these flashbacks so we can throw you right into the start of the story when like the things that are important are happening uh, but you also get to see why the knight and the gunslinger's relationship is at the core of this and how things came to be what they came to be so i think that backstory we fleshed out can be kind of flashbacked interwoven mm -hmm. um but yeah i think the real story is being told in the present got it so now we have this supernatural outside threat putting pressure on this one society that has political differences the knight is the side that either loses or splits off or the schism, right? The schism happens. Um, and now there's these two forces and um, it's the darkness of power, I guess, you know, like they're both trying to do the right thing. And to do that, they need to defeat the other one, essentially. Yeah. So here's something that I'm thinking about, Charles. What if unbeknownst to our gunslinger, it is the guns and something about that and the industry and the way it's changed that has caused the darkness to start happening like this is like the twist at mm. the end potentially is like they were seeking the guns in the first place in some way to gain power and strength and these kind of things and fend off enemies and like the twist we find out and now they're pushing, like, no, we have to use it to fight these enemies. But something about the guns are the reason that the existential threat happened in the first place. And right. that's what the exiled knight figured out. That's interesting. But somehow the schism I think, still yeah, happened. I think what makes it interesting is we have two ways of handling the problem, right? There's the reactive way, which is like, okay, let's shoot it. <laughs> and then there's the, like, this big picture idea right so what if the knight maybe even got what if the knight even received like a vision that like they were going to be the one that led everyone to defeat this force right like some yeah. divine intervention that was like you knight character you have to keep fighting and you have to oppose this because you're the one that brings uh you, you know salvation some kind of almost like sure. a prophecy right like your, your divine you know you need this you know and they bring those elements into well, it this like, needs you yeah this needs you and so the knight's like well i have to i've seen the vision i know that this is my you know what i have to do and then the gunslinger is like okay but you know i've been fighting these things for a long time and i know how power works and you it you really just have to have the better tools for the job you know and you mm. don't have those tools or you refuse to use them or whatever and we don't have the time or the luxury to play by your ways we have to do it these ways and 
and that's kind of the conflict maybe yeah i think that i think that makes a lot of sense and that gives our exiled knight motivation even if they don't know like the twist and we, we can make it a twist then at the end that the that bit about the guns were causing it the whole time uh, mm -hmm. but we don't need that for the exiled knight to be motivated to be an antagonist we just need right. them to be prophesized uh, and it gives us that option for later right there could potentially be multiple like supernatural forces at work here and um one of them has somehow given the knight this quest kind of thing you know like you're the one that has to do this like because you have to be because this is the vision you know this is yeah. what you need to do and i think we can work toward a moment where the gunslinger and exiled knight finally patch things up and fight the darkness together by the end of things where because yeah. the gunslinger thinks this is the best way to fight the darkness but if they found out that like it's actually the exiled knight and this prophecy and all that kind of stuff that was right in the end and the guns were the problem then the gunslinger might throw that aside and fight the darkness in the way that our who we thought was our mm -hmm. antag was initially proposing and we get this moment kind of of reconciliation of these two characters that we've been following not just uh their uh, like fight together but also in those flashbacks how their relationship came to be close mm -hmm. so i think it would be rewarding in the end to have them come together and fight this common foe of the supernatural right. i see them darkness. like in this badass moment towards the end where they're side by side you know the gunslinger's got two pistols and it's like twirling them around and then to the back is the exile knight finally and they're you know but does he have the pistols if the guns were causing it? well i'm not totally in love with the idea that the guns are causing it um I'm kind of interested in this idea of like politics getting in the way because the knight's exiled, right? So what if the knight just has an uphill battle that's just not the probable or the realistic like horse to back in this whole thing? It's like, okay, well, you may have this divine thing. First of all, that sounds kind of crazy to me. And second of all, you're exiled and you don't like you don't um you don't have any power like and to 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 do what you're proposing would mean to overthrow the politics that are in place and to change, like basically restructure society is like, you're asking way too much. We'll all be dead by that point. So like, it doesn't matter whether you've had this divine thing or not. And I, I'm on the fence about the, cause I like that he's the gunslinger and he's using guns. You know, I think it would be cool, <laughs> but it could be cool for 95% of the novel and then the <laughs> twist. The, like, so here's why I, I like it, Charles. Okay. Is the, like, the guns are how they were chasing power. And then that brought about this darkness. So if we're telling a story about the darkness of power, then, like, chasing mm. that power brings about this darkness. Whole throw down your guns kind of, of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And both in terms of it breaking up this country in terms of breaking up the relationship between the exiled knight and the gunslinger and in terms of like just quite literally bringing about these supernatural f forces that they're calling the darkness so i think it like th it gives us our title while yeah gunslinging is great but we can do that for 95 percent of the book get this epic moment where they reconcile and their their relationship, obviously, Charles, is at the core of this book. If Absolutely. We're using those flashbacks. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's I. So know, what's this cool I'm action gonna... moment at the end? I'm picturing this is there's a cool moment where they're fighting side by side. So maybe the gunslinger ditches the guns and picks up like a I don't know like they're, now they're fighting side by side. Like maybe he throws him a sword or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to picture well, that Charles... cool moment. You build toward that cool moment because maybe the hardened gunslingers, and they went to the like Knight Academy or whatever together. Maybe the hardened gunslinger was like incredible with a sword. So in the flashbacks, we see like the gunslinger was better with a sword than the knight ever was, and it's like the moment where he goes back to the they go back to the sword is the moment where it's like oh we're finally gonna get to see how 
awesome the gunslinger was this whole time with a sword because they wouldn't even use it. Yeah, or we could also have a fun moment where the gunslinger goes through that realization, is fighting with a sword, this other creature, and is like losing, and then the knight just shoots the thing with a pistol, and it's like, it has its uses. <laughs> and, yeah, and, that would be fun. And drops it on the floor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Indiana Jones moment. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like that. So there's those moments be... that would be kind of funny. Yeah. So All right. I, I, I think we're kind of homing in on this, Charles, the structure of this thing. It's a story that teaches us about the pursuit of power and its downfalls. Mm-hmm. It has themes of how, I mean, well, I, I'm thinking of another very popular series that has themes about how bickering about political factions when there's an existential threat um mm-hmm. <laughs> i guess no spoilers but i know what you're talking about you know yeah. the one um and uh, we kind of have those elements playing out and at the core of this thing is that relationship between a hardened gunslinger and an exiled knight who grew up together we get those flashbacks to flesh out what their relationship was like and it all putting comes a, to... putting aside your differences which yes. can be personified as like putting aside your weapons or your ideals or whatever but it's brought to the nth degree through fantasy of like you know yeah. we need to put aside these you know whatever that is that we're competing on to fight the dark to fight this threat that faces us all you know yeah like regardless like like regardless of whatever prophecy you had like that doesn't matter or the fact that like we have these super powerful weapons and you don't like that doesn't matter you know whatever we were bickering over doesn't matter and it's realizing that even after you've already faced these supernatural monsters and you still haven't reconciled that it's like how do you reconcile that the only way you can which is by you know um compromising coming to an understanding and working it out you know and i think that's what these two characters got to do yeah i think it's cool because the friendship then gets to parallel both the their two larger factions Mm -hmm. and maybe if they're both leaders of these factions then them coming together actually allows for the factions to come together because their leaders have settled their differences and then them fighting together against the darkness both gives us that cool moment of their reconciliation, but also represents like, oh, the two sides have come together to fight something that is a much larger existential threat than either side actually posed to each other. Beautiful. I think we're kind of there. Yeah. I think so, too. All right. The darkness of power. Do you want to popcorn a synopsis kind of thing here? Yeah, sure. Um, So, by the start of the story, we have a hardened gunslinger who is a leader of a particular faction. This faction is more of the faction that is in power at the start of the story. Uh, And we also have an antagonist that is an exiled knight who has their own faction or followers that represent kind of the old way of doing things. We're kind of new to this world of uh, gunslinging and uh, gunpowder, all that kind of stuff. Uh, But Charles, Charles, despite all the issues that led to these two lifelong friends splitting and their two factions uh, having a schism, as we've uh, said, <laughs> and all this infighting, there's something larger looming. What is that, Charles? That's right. Everything changed when the darkness came, everybody. Uh, all of a sudden, things started happening. There was one horrifying night when all of these supernatural beings that no one's ever seen before started attacking people and this the leaders of this society including this hardened gunslinger are hard at work protecting civilization fighting on the front lines the you know doing what the best that they can with in the improved tools that they have to take on this force um and then you have 
the added pressure of his lifelong friend who was exiled like before or maybe at this moment or somewhere around these times was yeah. exiled for having these you know old school ideas this night after the darkness came received this divine intervention or this mm-hmm. prophecy, prophecy that only they can actually stop the darkness for good and they're through this vision that they receive from this force that we know is true that he has the game plan on how to well we um, don't know if it's true right I but think. has this game plan and it was so divine and he's so believing in that in his belief system as a knight and like the honor and duty and all that that this vision was um came to him it's like you need to rule these people and only through your leadership by doing these things this way can we stop the darkness and so now the gunslinger has to deal with one like being in this faction that's actually running the city and to the the pressure of this exiled knight and his ever rising group of like traditionalists i would say true and i'm not sold on the exiled knight being a dude by the way i think maybe a brian type or whatever i think we've yeah. got whatever gender neutral protagonist and antagonist at this point we have a lot more fleshing out to do after the show but (laughs) oh yeah when we when we never write this but anyone who writes this i think the characters can be uh, of any gender so i think that from there charles it's also worth mentioning that we're getting these flashbacks throughout uh, to better understand the Harn Gunslinger and Exiled Knight's relationship. We hear these rumblings in the present timeline that the two of them used to be close friends or grew up together, but we do get these moments where we flash back in time and see that they grew up together and attended some sort of like magic school, knight academy type, probably not magic school, but like knight academy type thing. And in fact, it was the the gunslinger who we've never seen in the present timeline wield a sword ever who was the more impressive knight, the more impressive sword wielder, but they put it aside. Gave it up a long of, time ago. Yes, <laughs> they are hardened. So they put it aside because they thought the guns were a more efficient weapon to try to take down uh, these uh, de- darkness enemies that are coming about but it's not just a coincidence charles that the this gunslinging stuff came about at the same time as the darkness no it's not as we know violence just incites more means of violence and when guns were invented it created more conflict and that's the darkness of power you know the the more evil of a tool that you develop, the more evil tool you need to fight it. And it turns out that whether through mining something too greedily or too deep or whatever it is, um, the use of guns and the production of guns, I guess, is somehow feeding into this, this darkness. And we are, you know, duo comes in, this gunslinger and this knight, they come to realize this. And after, you know, it comes down to this hour where there's just everything is in shambles and all they've done is fighting and more fighting and hasn't gotten them anywhere. And their quest to become the more powerful person over the other to take control of the situation has brought no good. And it is only through their idea to, like forget power and to just work together that we have the gunslinger and the knight fighting side by side again. And it's that friendship and it's that, you know, realization of, you know, what does it mean to be powerful or whatever, you know, that's the theme. Um, They, they take on the darkness. Yeah, they take on the darkness, and, and I think they win, Charles. <laughs> I think they have to win at this point because we don't want to be like, they reconcile their differences, they come together after everything we've built, and but then they lose. <laughs> I think they do win, and mm. I think the factions come together. And if you do want your guns, Charles, I'll let you have that they figure out a way to mine them or whatever that doesn't involve 
way they were doing it before that brought about the darkness. How's that for you? I think that's worth exploring and considering because um, you have to figure out what it is exactly that guns that makes a dark force exist in the world well i think that's as good as it right the mining the something that the gunpowder is giving off whatever it's a fantasy novel so there's all sorts of ways you can go about that Mm -hmm. but i think that's less important it it could be any of those right so so we we just won't mine there anymore (laughs) whatever it is whatever the reason is yeah i think you know when we don't actually ever write this but in in theory if we ever were to we'd have to think about okay what is actually causing it and and if we do want a sequel or whatever where guns are back then sure whatever we need to do to make sure that happens without the darkness coming back i'm fine with it i just want that moment that it's like the pursuit of these greater weapons or power is what brought about the darkness because yeah it does for the title i do i do like that as well I think that's a great, and I picture that like, what happened to your duty and your honor? And he's like, that died a long time ago. <laughs> Someone please write this in a less cheesy way than Charles keeps imagining it. I don't know. It could be a uh, it could be a nice cheesy popcorn book. You never know. <laughs> it could. I like I like your moment where the the knight like picks up a gun and like shoots it and maybe saves the gunslinger's life by doing it and then has that kind of like hey they have their uses especially if it's mining or something like that then well that one's already been mined so it doesn't matter that like (laughs) i shoot it and he's like and it's kind of like a crack and you know a crack in his beliefs and shows more of his character right where it's like this whole time he's never touched the gun never used the gun but he uses it to save his friend and then the friend not even like thank you for saving my life that was a close one just like looks at him doesn't even have to say anything and the guy's like it has its uses (laughs) like that's like leave it at that (laughs) yeah you know so that's a charming moment there and that's the story of the power of darkness yeah I, I feel pretty good about that. That was, again, I think, more coherent <laughs> than uh, we were expecting. And I think know, we got we a lot more to work. <laughs> we got a lot more to work with, with what the, you know, the random title and character generator giveth the random character yes. and title generator taketh away. Yes, I, I think, think we today... had the opposite challenge here of, like, we had anything we could want to make this story out of and then trying to get it to the specifics whereas we had something so specific and bizarre in the last episode that we had to (laughs) go out and try and make it make sense and you know so we got two ends of the spectrum here and who knows what friends creating fantasy will have us do in the future well, you can look forward to Charles is going to make a wonderful book cover. <laughs> Do my <before>. best. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> the darkness of power. And I'm looking forward to what he comes up with. So <laughs> I think, uh, I think yeah, we're just, uh, I think it's a standalone too, Charles. I think it's a standalone also. I think we just push for the movie rights for this one. It's yeah. how we make the money. You know, the other one I was trying to spin to a whole trilogy you know, book deals, movie deals, all that TV deals. I think this can be a nice big blockbuster, you know, like nine figure movie budget kind of. Yeah. Kind of. We're willing to sell the movie rights to (laughs) anyone wondering. That's right. And we'll give you a good price too. (laughs) Very good price. Honestly, uh, I think Charles, have we decided that all of our friends creating fantasy ideas are public domain for <laughs> anyone to write or are you feeling more like they're yours Charles? Uh, they're people can yours. write whatever they want but we own it no i'm kidding <laughs> people can write whatever they want these are You're just right. ideas ideas are the easy part it's the execution and actually making it good that right. um, takes all the skill. And if you're able to actually make this good, well, you deserve, deserve to reap it. all the rewards. Yes. But don't forget about us once you become successful. Don't we forget the little guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now take whatever you do or don't like or write fan fiction, write something you're trying to publish. Uh, if, if you can turn it good, like Charles said, then it's all yours. But, you know, I love to... 
I love coming up with this idea about an exiled knight and Harn Gunslinger who go through a lot together, and in the end, they end up maintaining their lifelong friendship. And Charles, I feel like that's what you and I did today, is yes. get through all of this together and maintain our lifelong yes. friendship. It's, you know, when we put aside our differences and our desires for power, that's when we truly shine on the show. And, and I think the... Friends creating fantasy is kind of like the great equalizer. <laughs> the, here's the, <laughs> we're randomly generating what you have to do, and, and, and good luck to you. And it's only through our support of each other that we're able to get to the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think we've finally done. So I agree. Charles, if you can get that outro music pumping, which you've already done, Just then... Yeah. Yeah, we can tell them where they can find us. That's right. You can find us on Twitter at the FTF Podcast with a number one at the end. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at the FTF Podcast. You can shoot us an email at the FTF Podcast at gmail.com. That's how you can reach us. If you want to support us, Dylan, they just so happen to have Apple podcast they want to show some love for the show what kind of options do they have scroll down on our page on apple podcasts and find those five blank stars and toss five stars to our podcast if you're in a giving mood and you like what you heard i think writing a review would be even more awesome but anything that you're willing to do even even just the fact that you made it all the way to the end of this episode and you're still listening thank you so much for doing that yes thank you so much everybody for listening making it to the end of this episode we love you we appreciate you thank you thank you thank you and as always go forth and conquer friends